Welcome to a short video on how to do wind corrections using an A6B. This video is going to use the version that you see here on the right. Some quick terminology, the true index triangle lies at the top of the E6B. The speed arcs are the lines that run horizontally. The grommet lies in the middle, and the wind correction angles are the lines running vertically. If you take anything away from this video, it should be that the ground speed is represented by the grommet. If you remember that, it will make it much easier. Your true airspeed should always be the pen mark. Because of this design, you can actually measure wind really quickly in 360 degrees by measuring outwards from the grommet. The lines, at least the ones going horizontal, each measure two knots of wind speed. Wind correction angles are measured outwards from the true index center line, and most of the time each line represents one degree. Corrections to the right are a positive addition to your heading, whereas corrections to the left are a negative reduction in your heading. I usually try to think of left for less. So when you are creating a nav log and you need to determine what your ground speed and wind corrections are going to be, I am going to show you how to do that. What you need is you need wind direction and you need speed typically derived from something like this. Line up the wind direction at the very top there in line with the true index triangle. Just line up the grommet with the horizontal line that represents 100 knots. Draw a line upwards representing the speed of the wind, remembering that one line horizontally equals two knots of wind. I like to use a piece of clear tape and then I can just mark it up and remove it after. Now that you've marked that prevailing wind onto your E6B, you can play around with that and put different headings on top and see how the wind is going to affect your flight. So for example here, we have a wind direction of 160, and my desired track is 106. And so my correction would be to the right, and it is going to be a correction of seven degrees. Once you have the desired track heading on the top of the E6B in line with the true line triangle, you want to slide your ruler through the device until you have your the tip of the line on the true airspeed line going horizontally. And then you read your ground speed on the grommet as mentioned before, and your vertical line is shown there splayed out to the right. Eventually you'll recognize that whatever quadrant your pen mark is lying in will determine whether you're correcting to the right or left or whether the wind is going to give you a headwind or a tailwind. Now in order to solidify that idea, grab a nav log and play around with different wind corrections and see if that all makes sense. Next, we're gonna look at determining winds while you are in flight. In order to do this, you're going to need four pieces of information. You are going to need from your navigation log your intended course and your true airspeed that you planned for. You are also going to need your in-flight heading correction and you're going to need your in-flight ground speed. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to line up your intended or your planned course or track with the top of that true index triangle. Then you're going to slide the wind speed ruler to center the grommet on your actual ground speed that you calculated or that your GPS is telling you. Next, ask yourself, is the heading that you're actually flying what you plan to fly? And does that mean are you correcting for wind? If you are, what direction and how many degrees? Just remember that whenever you're in an airplane, unless you're using a GPS, all of your heading indications are going to be reported to you in magnetic, since you are probably setting your heading indicator to your magnetic compass. So just make sure that you don't get them confused when you are reporting your winds. Lastly, you'll want to know what your true airspeed is expected for the conditions of the day and your power setting. So let's say my true airspeed for this aircraft is 95 knots and my correction is to the left 10 degrees. So where those two lines intersect, I would make a pen mark. Then I would rotate the inner circle to make sure that the pen mark lines up vertically with the triangle at the top. And I would read the wind direction off the triangle and I would read the wind intensity from the grommet up to the pen line in knots. Let's say, for example, that we plan to flight with a true airspeed of 110 knots and a heading of 090 degrees true. Then when we're in flight, we realize that our ground speed is only 100 knots and that in order to stay on course, we have a heading correction of six degrees to the right. Therefore, we have determined that our ground speed is 10 knots less than we intended and we have a positive or right hand correction of six degrees. Line up your E6B on the grommet of the ground speed, which is 100, and your intended course at 090 degrees true. Then draw a line along your true airspeed of 110 knots outwards towards your correction to the right of six degrees. Finally, rotate the inner wheel so that the line is vertical and read the wind speed and direction at the top. And the last thing you wanna ask yourself is does the answer that I got make sense? And it would appear that in this case it does. 
And again, don't try to do this the first time when you're flying the plane. Try to do a couple of examples on the ground. Trust me, it'll be a lot easier to do so because you'll be able to provide your full attention to the exercise as opposed to diverting half of your attention to flying the plane and learning this at the same time. That makes it a lot more frustrating. Don't do that.